Hello and welcome. So today, guys, we are going to be reviewing four of the latest launches of 2024. Now, these four fragrances I've really been looking forward to. But honestly, guys, the prices of these fragrances have gone up so much that I made myself the promise that this year I would be a bit more careful when blind buying. So I was really good. I went ahead and I ordered decants of each of these fragrances except for one. So today I will be sharing with you the review of each of these fragrances and then I will be rating them and also telling you if I plan to pick them up or not. But before we jump right in, if this is your first time here, I'm Arahi and in this channel we love to talk about fragrances, makeup and fashion. I upload videos on Tuesdays, Thursdays, Sundays and Sometimes I even have a bonus video for you during the week. If that sounds like the type of content that you're interested in and like a good plan, then please consider subscribing, give this video a thumbs up, and don't forget, leave a comment. Let's go. So the first fragrance that I want to discuss with you today is a fragrance that is from a fragrance house that is quite new to me, but I've really been loving their DNA and I've already picked up two of the four fragrances that they have in their portfolio. One of the four fragrances was just launched in 2024 and we'll be talking about in a minute. The other two are Empyrean, which was launched in, I believe it was the end of 2022 or no, actually in 2023. And I did pick that one up and I absolutely love it. And the other one was also released in 2023 and I've already talked about that one in the channel. I absolutely love it and it's called Zenobia. These fragrances are truly exceptional, beautiful fragrances. They are not the type of fragrance that reminds you really of anything in your collection. To me, they have been very unique. So I am hoping that Ange Noir, which is the new fragrance for 2024, is also as exceptional as its predecessors. But these fragrances are quite pricey, so like I told you at the beginning, I decided to go ahead and decant just to make sure that this is a fragrance that I want to invest in. So let's talk about Ange Noir. All right, so here is the little decant that I ordered. I tested this fragrance for an entire 12 hour day because I really wanted to make a decision on if I wanted to pick it up or not. But for today, I sprayed it on the blotter so that I could just give you a very objective opinion, not involving my own skin chemistry. So when I first sniffed this fragrance, to me, this fragrance has a bit of a masculine opening, which you know I don't mind. It opens very ambery with a bit of musk, which balances with the amber quality of the fragrance, and a very prominent patchouli. Now, whenever you talk about patchouli opening in a fragrance, at least in my experience, that tells me that it is going to have a bit of a masculine opening. It is also warm, spicy, woody, and it has a touch of like a green note to it. I haven't been able to figure out what that is, but we'll talk more about it in a minute. It also has a touch of a balsamic quality, but at the dry down, guys, it is definitely powdery. So you have to like a powdery fragrance. Is it really, really powdery? No, but it's definitely powdery. So from my experience in using this fragrance, let me tell you a little bit about the olfactory journey. So this fragrance, at least to my nose, opens, like I said, quite ambery. But the note that I pick up on the most in the opening is a beautifully done green apple with like a faint rose note in the background. Immediately after that initial opening, you start to pick up on the violet. And once the violet jumps in, you find that the violet and the rose take over for like a floral stage in this journey. And the apple takes the place that the rose had before in the backdrop. And because the violet has come in, I guess, I start to pick up on a little bit of powderiness. 
as the journey continues, I pick up on a very dominant patchouli. Now, in the opening, I don't immediately get patchouli, but not short thereafter, I do get the patchouli. And midway down that olfactory journey towards the dry down, I am picking up on a very dominant patchouli. Now, this patchouli is definitely giving the fragrance a bit of earthiness, and I know it's definitely the patchouli. It also adds a bit of like a green quality to the fragrance because I can't think of any other note and I don't pick up on any other note that gives it that green quality. At the dry down, I'm getting a very dominant patchouli, not obnoxious, but it's definitely patchouli with like a woody quality to the fragrance and a bit of powderiness. But I'm also getting a touch of like a balsamic quality combined with that green tonality that I discussed with you before. It's a really beautiful dry down because the patchouli is blending really well with all those other tonalities, but the fragrance has like a freshness to it that I really can't explain. I think that this fragrance is extremely different and I can tell you that I have nothing like it in my collection. This is a fragrance that I really think is perfect for spring. It is definitely perfect for spring, for fall, and the beginning of the winter. But this is not a fragrance that I would pull at all, at all during the summer or during mid to late winter. This is not a fragrance that I would use for any occasion either. To me, this is more of an evening to late night events type of fragrance. Um, am I saying that this is exclusively for like a formal affair or a black tie event? No, you can use it for any occasion, whether it's informal all the way to a black tie event, as long as it's in the early evening hours all the way till late, late at night. I just don't think that this is a daytime fragrance, I think is what I'm trying to say. This fragrance, which is not any different than its predecessors, um, gives me a good solid eight hours, if not more. So this is really kind of like a beastie fragrance, but that has always been my experience with any of the fragrances that I already have in my collection from Tomavici. But this one I would say is a bit more intense than Zenobia. So for those of you that did share with me that you did pick up Zenobia after I spoke about it, I'm here to tell you that Ange Noir 21 is even more intense on my skin than Zenobia. I get a very strong sillage from this fragrance as to be expected, and I also get a very strong projection during the first, I would say, three hours plus, and then it becomes a scent bubble that is very, very strong. And then it does go down to a skin scent around hour seven. So this is quite an intense fragrance. I also wanted to share with you that this is a fragrance that I would really recommend that you try and get a decant because this is a fragrance that I think that you really need to try on skin. And you know how I feel about the note of patchouli. Personally, I'm really a patchouli lover, but patchouli can go so many different ways, especially once it starts to in interact with your skin chemistry. So I really advise you to not blind buy this fragrance and get yourself a decant before making that final decision. So how does this fragrance make me feel? How did it make me feel when I tried it? So during the day, I did test it for actually 12 hours, if not more. And during the day, I just felt like it was not like giving me the feel that I needed because I was wearing a fragrance that I truly believe is more for evening and late night occasions. And I was wearing it since like seven in the morning. And for me, that just made me feel kind of like out of place a bit, but I have to tell you, around seven o'clock, I started to feel like, and I am not kidding, I started to feel like this fragrance was just perfection. It felt mysterious and dark and sexy. It just gave me that kind of feel. It almost bordered on like femme fatale because this fragrance does lean heavy to the masculine side, in my opinion, at least on my skin. But my husband didn't tell me that he thought that it was more of a masculine fragrance or that it smelled like something that maybe 
he would prefer to wear. He just thought that it was a sexy fragrance. But then you know how some of these fragrances that lean masculine do make you feel sexy like that? Well, that's the case with this one. But the feel was definitely that of like sexy, mysterious, dark and alluring. All in all, this for me is definitely a unisex fragrance that leans heavy to the masculine side. It really does. And for me, I would definitely say that due to how unique of a scent profile it has to my nose and its incredible performance, I definitely give this fragrance a 10 out of 10 even though I will tell you that I decided not to pick it up. For me, it's a bit too masculine. It is a fragrance that I most likely will be picking up for my husband though, because I think I would love to smell it on him. But it's definitely not a fragrance that I would like to add to my personal collection just because of that. So the next fragrance that I want to discuss with you is the latest launch from Tom Ford, and we are talking about Oud Wood Parfum. So Oud Wood Parfum was just launched in 2024, and I so nicely received this little decant from my essay at Bergdorf's. The original Oud Wood was released in 2007, and then in 2017, 10 years later, we did get Oud Wood Intense. And now in 2024, we have Oud Wood Le Parfum. Now, I did own the original Oud Wood that was launched in 2007, as it was launched at the first time that the entire private blend collection from Tom Ford was launched. And at the time, I just absolutely loved, absolutely loved that fragrance. It's actually one of my favorites, but I finished the bottle and I just never picked it up again. Now the intense version that was launched in 2017, I did have a couple of decants of that one, courtesy again of one of my essays at the time, but I decided not to pick it up because I was not very impressed because even though it was called to be the intense version of the 2007, there was just something about it that just didn't make it feel right. It was a bit more intense, but I did not think that it was exactly the same as the one that had been launched in 2007. So fast forward now for this 2024 release, I was very, very leery of just blind buying it or just picking it up. So I was so happy when she just decided to send me a decant. Now I will start by telling you that this fragrance does smell to my nose, very, very much like the original, which made me very, very happy. So I did dab it on this one because the decant she sent me is not a spray. She must have taken a bit of the fragrance and put it, you know, in a little container. I I absolutely love this fragrance, guys. I, I just... I love this fragrance. This is so incredible. But let's talk about the fragrance because there's so much to say. So this is definitely an amber woody fragrance. It opens very, very spicy. So warm, spicy, woody with quite a bit of vanilla. And the vanilla is done beautifully. I actually wish that the vanilla sex fragrance had this kind of vanilla. This is a vanilla that doesn't make the fragrance super sweet. It is just perfection. This fragrance is also quite powdery, as I recall the original to be. And I would say that it's definitely very spicy, which makes it a bit aromatic also. And there is, as I recall the original, a touch of a balsamic quality to it. But all in all, guys, this fragrance is very reminiscent of the original. They're probably exactly the same. Now, this is a fragrance that I really recommend for all seasons of the year, day or night, with the exception of summer. Oud Wood, in any of its variations, whether it's 2007 or 17, is not a fragrance that I would pull 
for the summer season. So when you hear oud wood, you probably imagine that this fragrance is gonna have a great deal of oud or that the oud note will be quite prominent in the fragrance and all of the stages of the olfactory journey. But just like in the original fragrance, that is not the case in this fragrance. This fragrance has a very smooth and beautifully done oud that blends exceptionally with all of the other notes and just gives quite a bit of character and presence to the fragrance itself. So let me walk you through the journey that I experienced with this fragrance. So on my skin, this fragrance opens with quite a bit of cardamom, some pink pepper, and a very, very faint rosemary in the background. But I definitely pick up on the rosemary and the pink pepper, but the cardamom is the star of the opening for sure. At all this, I don't even really pick up on the oud in the opening. It's only about maybe a couple of minutes into the journey towards the dry down that I can definitely distinguish the presence of the note of oud. The same time as the oud appears, then I start to get hints of patchouli and also a creaminess that I believe is definitely brought on by the combination of like patchouli and sandalwood. It is an absolutely beautiful, beautiful stage within the olfactory journey. You get that spicy effect from the opening now in the background of that creamy combination of like oud, sandalwood, and patchouli. It is just an exquisite, exquisite scent. Then as we start to approach the dry down, I start to get like whiffs of vanilla. And the vanilla is just so beautifully done, like I said before. So at the dry down, I have the most beautiful combination of spices with like a creamy quality to the fragrance that's brought on by the sandalwood and the patchouli. And then I get tonka and vanilla combined together, which take not center stage, but take a pretty prominent position within that entire blend. It is just an exquisite fragrance. And this one has made me as happy as I recall the 2007 making me. It's something that I really, really enjoy and that I really recommend that you get your nose on. The only thing that I have to say about this fragrance that is not so good is that the performance, while it has improved from the one that I had in 2007, because that one I only had like five hours, this one does get me six hours, but it becomes a skin scent around the second hour. After the second hour and all the way up to that six hour mark, I get whiffs of the fragrance as I'm wearing it. But if I spray it on my clothes, then I do get a bit more than the six hour mark. But still, you know, I wish that it had better performance. I do get a moderate sillage and a moderate projection. And although I have not received compliments when I did wear it out, because you know, when I'm testing, I try to go somewhere to see if I get reactions. I did get a compliment from my husband though. He immediately noticed, but my husband does have a little soft spot for Tom Ford fragrances. All in all, this is a fragrance that I definitely plan to pick up. I really, guys, I have to tell you, I don't care if there are performance issues with this fragrance or not, because I really do love it. But I have to give this fragrance an eight out of 10, no matter how much I love it, because of the performance issues. So the next fragrance that I want to share with you is from a designer. And this is a fragrance that I can't remember what year we had the original, but since then we've had a flanker almost every year. And I so far have picked up three of the flankers. Last year in one of my videos, I did recommend the flanker that was launched in 2023 which was Chloe Nomad Jasmine Naturel Intense. But this year we have Chloe Nomad Nui de Egypt. Now I decided to pick up this fragrance because I really do enjoy the fragrances from Chloe. And Nomad for me, that entire line is really enjoyable. Not all of them have really been a success, I must admit, but last year's Jasmine Natural Intense is one of my favorites. It's actually my favorite up to that point. And let's see how I feel about this one. So this one is an amber floral fragrance. 
that opens as to be expected very ambery and sweet this one is really sweet it's warm spicy with some white florals and to my nose quite a bit of vanilla there's also a citrus quality to this fragrance and it definitely does have a mix of like white and yellow florals but we'll talk more about that so in my journey this fragrance opens with quite a bit of like myrrh and ginger and like in the in the background you have some cinnamon so it does open quite spicy. Then something really interesting starts to happen. As the journey continues, I pick up on the orange blossom. And the orange blossom, guys, intensifies quite a bit. And it almost makes this fragrance for a minute smell, or not smell, it like gives me a vibe of like, love don't be shy. It really, really does. At this part of the stage, I also start to pick up on the vanilla. And the vanilla and the orange blossom carry the fragrance all the way to the dry down. They're like the stars. They're like front and center in this fragrance until the dry down with that backdrop of the spices. And then at the dry down, guys, I have a beautiful, beautiful mix of like florals, like the white and yellow florals wrapped like they've been wrapped around the, the, the spices and then the cinnamon steps in in a bit more prominent way than it was at the beginning because at the beginning it was like faint and in the background. And then I also get that vanilla as the backdrop in the dry down, but the vanilla is quite present and blending well with the florals and the spices. And then to add a bit of character to the fragrance, the woody notes are definitely present now let's talk about the feel of this fragrance because this one is really interesting so what I get like what I envision when I really really sniff this fragrance is like she is an equestrian she is definitely all about her equestrian activities and her schedule and she is quite busy, she's very energetic, she's very assertive, she's very beautiful, but she has a soft side that completely goes away once she's on that horse. And then the only piece of that beautiful soft side of her that you get while she's in her equestrian activities is this scent. This really, guys, speaks to me of someone exactly like that. All in all, guys, I get a moderate projection and moderate sillage with this fragrance. And the day that I wore it, I did get one compliment, but it was from a friend. And you know how you sometimes wonder, did they just give me a compliment because they're my friend? Now, I also get around six hours tops with this fragrance, but I did find myself respraying around the five hour mark, so that performance is not quite there yet. This is definitely a fragrance that you can use all throughout the year. All in all, guys, this is a fragrance that I find that is so easy to pull. It may not be beast mode, but it's also a fragrance that you can make your signature fragrance or a fragrance that you can use just to go to the office and for more casual occasions all throughout the year. This is really a fragrance that smells quite beautiful. I also feel that this one is a bit different than the other. So this one to me is a bit more exotic. And if you paid attention to the notes when I shared them, there are two notes there that are not very common in fragrances. There's broom, right? And then there's, uh, I don't even know how to pronounce it, but I think it's pronounced kifi. And kifi, I looked it up because I wanted to understand what, you know, what was it that I was getting in this fragrance? But K-Y-P-H-I, kifi, I think it's pronounced, is supposed to be an incense compound that was found in antique Egypt or was used in antique Egypt for religious or medical purposes. So in this fragrance, although you're not going to get that really smoky incense type of effect there is something very exotic about this fragrance and i really believe that this note has a lot to do with it and then the note of broom in my experience typically adds like an oriental feel to a fragrance 
So I think that all in all, the name of this fragrance really is in line with what I get from the fragrance. It does bring kind of like an exotic vibe and it does make this flanker quite different than all the others that I've experienced before. Although this fragrance is a bit mysterious and it does give that exotic vibe and feel, I think that this is not necessarily groundbreaking. It's not that it's common or linear, but it's not necessarily groundbreaking. And because of its performance, although I really do enjoy it, I'm only going to rate it an eight out of 10. So the next fragrance and the last fragrance that I wanna share with you today is the one that as soon as I heard that this would be launching in 2024, I was just like waiting to just pick it up. But I have done a very good job at controlling myself and I went ahead and I just picked up this decant. So I have used this fragrance for more than just a day because not to spoil what I'm going to talk about, but I really do enjoy it. I do love fragrances with the note of cherry, but I have to tell you that in my opinion, this is not an easy feat. So to create a cherry dominant, a cherry note dominant fragrance in a successful way is really not something that I think is easy. I have quite a number of, of fragrances in my collection with the note of cherry and a lot of them are quite different. I've also decluttered quite a number of them because I just did not like them. But let's talk about this fragrance. So this fragrance definitely opens with a very bright cherry, with like a combination of almonds and strawberry. This cherry is quite bright. And to my nose, it's quite realistic. Probably one of the most realistic cherries I've had or I've seen in any fragrance. I do pick up on the note of peach and it is sweet. What I don't pick up is on the apple at all. I just pick up on the cherry with a mix of like the almonds and the strawberry, but I definitely don't pick up on the apple. What I also love about this fragrance is that not during the opening or throughout any part of the olfactory journey does the cherry give me that like cough syrup type of smell, which is, you know, quite common in a lot of the cherry fragrances that I've tried in the past. Then as the journey continues, I pick up on the florals and I can clearly pick up on the jasmine and the rose, but I can't really distinguish any of the other florals that may be present. Although, you know, now the florals have come in, the cherry continues to be very present and to my nose, quite realistic. Then the dry down, guys, is my absolute favorite. It is such an exquisite dry down because you get that like juicy, very realistic and still kind of bright cherry. And it mixes so, so beautifully with like vanilla and tonka. And there's a sweetness at the dry down with like a backdrop of the florals and a hint of woodiness. It is an absolutely beautiful dry down. All throughout the journey, you know, the fruits are present. At times they are in the forefront, but they're never dominant. And sometimes they're in the background. And then I also find that the florals also play that, that like uh, back and forth game of being very present or just, you know, faint in the background. And I think that's just a lovely, lovely interaction that happens throughout the entire olfactory journey. Then what I also love is that just as the name says, it does smell like a maraschino cherry. That's what you get. And it's a very realistic cherry, which is not something, again, that I find to be common in fragrances with this note. I also love that the vanilla is present, but it's never dominant and the woody notes play very well with the vanilla and at the dry down when you get that powderiness, it all comes together seamlessly. I think that this is truly an exceptional fragrance and I know that I just gave it away, but honestly guys, once you get your nose on this fragrance, you'll see what I mean. 
This fragrance is a fragrance that I would pull for all seasons throughout the year, day or night, and for any occasion. And this fragrance right now gives me a moderate projection and a moderate sillage, and I get a good six plus hours with this fragrance, and that's without overspraying. I didn't have a chance to test it with overspraying, but I'm pretty sure that I could definitely probably get more. This fragrance does become a skin scent on my skin at the two hour mark, but the skin scent is one that continues to give me whiffs of the fragrance all throughout the wear of it. So now let's talk about a couple of things that I wanted to bring to your attention about this fragrance. And I've already said that I do consider this to be an exceptional fragrance, which means that I do love this fragrance. But that being said, the more that I sniff this fragrance, I keep getting kind of like a thought that I want to share with you. This fragrance is truly lovely, and I am not saying that it smells like any of the fragrances that I'm going to mention next. I'm just saying that to me, this fragrance, if you really want to know what it smells like, to me, this fragrance is a combination of like Tom Ford, Electric Cherry, because while this is not a favorite, this does have a very bright cherry in the opening. The problem with this fragrance is that that bright cherry dissipates almost immediately. And we all wish that, you know, that bright cherry remained all throughout the journey. So to me, this fragrance is like if Electric Cherry from Tom Ford and, and Bodacious from Bodacia the Victorious had a baby. For sure, without a doubt, that's really what I get. Honestly, I even sprayed both in one of my wrists because I wanted to see. Now this fragrance is quite robust and it, it has a spicy quality to it. The cherry is done beautifully. It's not a bright cherry as you will find in electric cherry or definitely not like the opening of maraschino, but this is a very solid cherry note fragrance that if you just top it off with that electric cherry, you are going to get kind of like that maraschino fragrance effect. Now you may not all agree and I understand but that is really what I pick up on after testing it. Now, I also wanted to talk about yet another fragrance that has the note of cherry that's a prominent cherry note in my collection and that I absolutely enjoy. And that is French Defense from Mind Games. I really think that this is a lovely fragrance, but I don't think that Maraschino and French Defense are exactly the same. When we talk about French Defense, I think there's a lot. I don't think I'm, I mean, I'm sniffing it. There's quite a bit more vanilla in this one. And I also find this fragrance to be sweeter. It's like the cherry at times almost takes a backdrop to that vanilla because the vanilla becomes quite dominant. But in the end, at the dry down, you do get a very beautiful blend of the cherry and the vanilla and all the other notes involved. When it comes to maraschino, I feel that the dry down just brings everything beautifully, seamlessly together. And that is what I love about maraschino and why I've decided that I will be adding it to my collection. I also think that this fragrance, although it's not beast mode, I'm not one of those people that think that in order for a fragrance to be exceptional, it has to also be beast mode. I don't need all of my fragrances to be beast mode, but I do think that Maraschino all in all is close to a masterpiece and a very well rounded fragrance. And I definitely give it a 10 out of 10. Now I am not surprised and I'm sure you're not surprised either because Suspiro has quickly become one of my favorite fragrance houses. At this time I have already six of their fragrances and when I add maraschino I will have seven and I can't wait to continue to try others. All right so we've reached the end of the video and I hope that this was enjoyable for you. It was certainly enjoyable for me and I am really looking forward to picking up those two fragrances Tom Ford Oud Wood from 2024 and Suspiro Maraschino. I'm really looking Looking forward to just spraying them and enjoying them. Let me know your thoughts on the fragrances that I discussed with you today and if you have any plans to get your nose on them. I really don't recommend that you blind buy them because they're all quite pricey. 
Well, Nomad is a, a bit more reasonable, but the others are quite pricey, even though I think that they're definitely worth it. I just think it's wiser if you get your nose on it before you pick them up. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for hanging with me today, and I will see you in the next video.